Hello, everybody! Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Friday. Welcome to the weekend. I am feeling fantastic this weekend, my my dudes and dudettes. Uh, man, I have done some work in the new workbench area that I am streaming from, and we'll be talking about that for sure. We got Zach in the house. We got a ton of people. We got uh, Ethan in the house as well. Saw already people are getting their drinks lined up and their pizzas, and they did their break, uh, their bathroom break, so appreciate that. We got Minnesota. I saw Rhode Island earlier. KH2SR, what's up? James, there's James. We'll be having a quirky QRP giveaway here shortly. And we'll also be doing a signal stick giveaway with free shipping. So, well, free shipping on either one of these, uh, but it's not free to me because I'm paying for it <laughs> for the quirky QRP. Craig from Colorado Springs. Love Colorado Springs. Uh, one of my favorite towns in and around um, the western the western states. So, yeah, very good. All right. Let's get things going here. How's it going, everybody? I'm live in the garage. I'm actually standing. I don't have a bench yet for a, a stool for my workbench. And it's a little chilly, so I got my I got my hood on just to warm up. But welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Today we are going to talk about portable HF antennas. Uh, I will cover VHF all very briefly, but there are there's a card that's already set up and a description for a live stream I did last year on mobile radios and antennas for mobile applications. So make sure you go check that out. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Toby's in Temecula. That's really close. Bishop, California. Uh, Schatz Bakery. Some of the best bread you can buy. I used to go rock climbing up in, uh, in Bishop. Absolutely awesome. Very, very cool. Okay, so as always, we're trying to move forward with ham radio. Today, we're going to talk about vertical antennas and they're going to be portable mobile mobile and portable i'll talk about the delineation between the two in a little bit but uh, basically we're talking about something that you can carry on your back on your person lug it out into the field and operate from you can operate from a car too that would classify it as mobile but uh, that's basically what we're going to be talking about so think about that as we get into it because we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between uh dipoles and verticals and all that fun stuff so keep that in mind since we're, we're kicking this whole thing off why don't you hit that thumbs up button it really helps me out if this is the first time you're watching this hit subscribe that also really helps me out and uh, appreciate you all for coming out we got oh hey toys are for boys six dollars and 66 cents let there be no evil in your vertical antennas thank you very much i appreciate that toronto ontario Canada. Took the Oh, Rick said, took the technician test last Saturday, and the FCC made it official today. Congratulations on the Facebook group, the Ham Radio Crash Course. There are so many people that are posting their uh, license updates that they got licensed by the FCC, and I am super happy about that. So please, if you haven't already, down in the description, there's a link to Facebook. Join the Ham Radio Crash Course on Facebook. It is a group of like-minded individuals, very welcoming, very open, and we don't step on anybody's enjoyment we are uh, inclusive and not exclusive, is what I like to say. Well, like we have Zach and Ethan in the house. They are our admins over on the YouTube side and Discord. And Discord, every night after the stream, we do a voice chat. You are welcome to join that. Discord is also where you go to get in on the giveaways that are above my head. All you got to do is take the link that Zach posts, go to the giveaways chat, which is a pound sign giveaway, and click the little horn right underneath Quirky QRP keychain and Signal Stuff Signal Stick. There's 44 on the Quirky QRP and 46 on the Signal Stick. That's all you have to do is click the little horn. And that's how that works. So very, very good. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I do have, I do have a news uh, item here. Let's see. Do I have... Yes, I do. Is this it? Ah, okay. Well, whew, I don't want to spoil the surprise. I do have one uh, announcement. This is before we go into the show. Uh, we've got James in the chat. James is the proprietor of Quirky QRP. And he told me he's working on something, uh, something pretty interesting. And he sent me some images, and the link is already in the description if you click on it. James is making an antenna. It's called the – ooh, hey, look at me. You can see my uh, my green screen. It's called a slinktenna, and it is a slinky 
which is connected to an unun, basically, or, or a matching type device. And he has done pretty well with it. Uh, the picture's really big, but if you go to the website, you can see PSK Reporter. And he's been using FT8 and JS8 Call to great results on that. And there's the size of it next to a, a KX. Is that a KX2 or a KX3? Looks like KX2. Tiny, very small. Said he mounted that thing eight feet up and uh, was able to work some some pretty decent contacts uh, with digital. And there it is next to an X5105. So that's not bad at all. And the price is right. I think it's about 50 bucks. So that's pretty cool. That's a really cool picture. I love that. So yeah, check that out. Check out James over link in the description. Very, very good. All right. So let's see. Um, he did mention... So Slinky, Slinky's, I'll, I'll talk about this briefly before we dive into the rest of the show. So Slinky's have kind of a stigma. It, oh, it's KX2. Great. Next to the KX2. Slinky's have kind of a stigma in the amateur radio community. People look at those metal Slinky's and they go, why can't we make this in an antenna? And you can. But as James mentioned, a lot of people are soldering those directly to the feed point of the coax. And that doesn't do so well. So he has a matching system that he's connected to it. And he has, um, apparently it works very well. So I'll get my hands on one, hopefully in the future, and we can try it out. Uh, maybe we'll string it up in the stream and uh, now in the garage because I have all kinds of space. Speaking of that, uh, let me show you what that looks like really quick. Here's where I'm working from. Uh, here's me. Woo! And my microphone. Brew Crew today is the Elysian avatar jasmine ipa i was like oh man i gotta give this a shot so oh we don't want to do call-ins yet that will be later but there's the phone number in case you want to think about it so 80 meters through six james says so thank you very much we'll do a lot more on that uh in the future so all right jasmine ipa pour that directly over the keyboard for maximum taste very clear I love anything jasmine. I'm a big fan of like jasmine rice, jasmine tea, all that good stuff. So this is the new uh, stream area. And over here, over here, I'll be working on some other stuff. Uh, I've got to clean off those shelves, but man. Mm. James says I'll have a slink antenna in a couple of weeks. So very good. All right. All right. So getting back on track here. Uh, what are we talking about? We are talking about... Portable, mobile, vertical antennas. Now, um, I have done a couple of soda activations, not like the some of the professionals we have in the chat here, and KG6HQD. There I am again with my green screen. Stop that. But I do like a good mobile installation and a good mobile operation base. And I think verticals are an interesting option in a couple of cases, and we're going to talk about them. Verticals are nice in a park. There's all kinds of different places that you can deploy them. You can deploy one in a parking lot and be sitting inside your car and using it that way. So the goal that we're talking about today is an ultra portable vertical antenna. And I found, your mileage will vary of course, that when shopping or building a portable vertical antenna, you can generally to choose two of the bullets below, lightweight, Easy to set up and take down and works worth a damn. You can only pick two of these. Now, I'm, I'm being a little facetious. Uh, most of these verticals work just fine. But some are obviously very, very portable and compromised. We will talk about this. Shane asks, how do I enter this giveaway contest? Well, I covered it already. But if uh, you take the link to Discord, which is in the description of the video, or Ethan or Zach will probably post it again, uh, you can go to the Discord, which is a chat room. And you click the chat room that says giveaway. Go to the bottom. It's like an IRC chat room. And click the little party horns. There'll be like 50 or something uh, numbers next to them. That's all you got to do is click it. Very simple. Here we go. So if you're interested in VHF, UHF mobiles, I already mentioned this in the beginning of the show, but I made a video on that last year, and it's uh, some recommendations on mobiles and how to install VHF, UHF on cars and different locations of cars and different antennas. I even talk a little bit about HF antennas, which I'm going to repeat a little bit about that, but it'll be on the tabletop when we go to that. So here's the dilemma with portable ops. 
we want mobility, right? We want to be able to put something in a bag, in a backpack, uh, something we lug around. And we, so that means we want it lightweight. Sometimes, I'd say most of the time, we're generally operating QRP type watts with antennas like this, although there are exceptions and most of them are compromised for a couple of reasons that I will mention later. Oh, we got K6UDA in the house. Ah, oh, very good. He says, I've got a Ventenna, 80 through 10 meters, but wow, what a pain in the butt to set up and tune. We will talk about that too. So if you push up the weight on the antennas, meaning make them a bit bigger, make them a bit longer, you're going to get length, which length is good. You want uh, generally verticals to be a uh, half wavelength or a quarter wavelength, and then that's also quarter wavelength radials. And that means if it's bigger, it can generally support more power. If it's a little bit bigger, you're probably going to cart along more radials. More radials is going to give you better performance. And generally, the bigger you get, the more bands of operation that you will see. Yes, Wicked Perfect noticed the engineering triangle that I put out there. K8 MRD radio stuff. Wolf River Coils works for me. Hey, buddy, we will talk about that shortly. So why vertical? So there's for portable ops, there are a couple reasons to go vertical. One, they're freestanding. That's possibly one of the best reasons to go vertical is that it's freestanding. Uh, they generally, generally, the colloquialism or the, the preceding thought is that they have lower radiation angles. So takeoff angles is probably the better term. So that the vertical is going to have better takeoff angles so that you're going to get potentially longer QSOs or be able to propagate out further and get back in better, better contacts. Um, so you get a uniform pattern, meaning your radiation pattern is going to be uniform, but that's largely dependent on the radials that you deploy and how you deploy them. Now, con, of course, is that they're vertically polarized, which we've talked about in many a video, and you generally want, um, you'll get more RF, more noise that way if you're operating vertical, depending on the environment you're in. So take away from all that, all the reasons in above, including con, is why you might want to think about a vertical for doing soda, parks on the air, something where you are away from interference, interference and RFI. So I want to give a shout out to Dave Kassler. He did a video, which is better, vertical or dipole. I believe I put the link in the description. You can check that out. A very straightforward discussion on the difference between dipoles and verticals, which I won't be covering in this video. Go, He did a really good job. So I would just say go look at what he has. So the parts of a vertical antenna, and I'm going pretty quickly, actually. We're going to have plenty of time to drink beer and play with uh, radios on the tabletop here, I think. So the parts of a, a vertical, portable vertical, is you generally have some sort of a whip, usually something that's telescopic like this guy. And then you'll have some kind of loading coil, something that you can adjust for the band or you know that you want to operate on. And then you'll have some kind of like a feed line connection, right? So that you can connect back to the radio. Then you have radials, usually one at least. Uh, some of the ones I'm going to show you only have one radial, which we will talk about. And then there's generally a mounting system, either some kind of tripod mount or a freestanding thing that it has that helps you out. So uh, I think it was already mentioned by Bob. Using a portable vertical. The setup is very straightforward for most of these verticals. You learn it once and you remember it forever, basically. The problem is that Bob already said the tuning can be pretty difficult, and I will be uh, talking about that as we go a little bit further. Now, what I do is I use the antenna graph uh, that is in the Zaiju X5105. It is a total crutch that I depend on uh, for tuning the antenna for the particular. Tuning is probably the wrong word. Got to be really careful. People are getting tr in trouble talking about tuning antennas uh, out on the YouTubes. We're creating a match, and I'm using, I'm adjusting the antenna to match the impedance of my radio and the feed point, basically. And so I use the Zyju for that. Antenna analyzers are good for that. There are lots of ways to do that, but those are the ways that I generally do it. One recommendation, I will be talking about one antenna that uh, you tune up at home and you mark it. And then that's what you always set it up to, and you kind of hope for the best in, in all cases, right? 
James Hannibal. Yes, a, he's talking about the Sling Tenna. So good. We will be talking about that later. Yes, a manual or auto tuner for the Sling Tenna. Yeah, so you, that uh, since it's using an un-un and you're going to have slinky elements, right, uh, you'll probably need some kind of tuner type of device, manual or automatic. <laughs> K8 MRD radio stuff. Yes, indeed. Someone did get called out big time. So power output on portable verticals. I, I have three here that we're actually I have four that we're going to talk about. The last one that's on this slide I just included for completeness. The Wolf River Coil, Coil TIA is a 200 watts single sideband output antenna, which is great for mobiles, uh, for mobile applications in a park or, or portable, whatever you want to use. 100 watts CW and 25 watts digital. Why does it step down? Well, single sideband is never really using 100% duty cycle when you're talking. The, the inflections of voice that we've covered in, in other chats basically never puts out the full 200 watts. John Di Liberto, hey, what's up? 73 DEAB3, is that a 7I or? Yeah, I'm assuming that's 7I. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. The um, now I lost a complete train of thought. The single sideband 200 watts you never really hit it because you're you're talking into it right, and so it's it's fluctuating. CW is a little bit more persistent, 100% duty cycle, and then digital, of course, like FT8, when you're running 15 seconds straight, you're taxing your radio a little bit. So you and you're taxing the antenna system as well. So keep that in mind when you think about um, what you want to do. Chris says, is it just me or is it going in and out pixely? It could be the lighting and my green screen setup. I just got this set up yesterday and I'm still fine tuning it. But as long as you can see the slides and hear me, then, then we're getting there. I apologize for that. It's always a work in progress. As ham radio is, you're always doing something different. So this is the uh, AX1 deployed in the field with my, oh man, you know what's nice about this? I can just put a leg up on my workbench and just chill this is fantastic i feel like so I, i'm going to take a little digression here i i like to think of this as kind of like friends talking i know i'm talking at you but i try and read the comments and i love the discord after chats and this feels like we're hanging out in a garage doing radio stuff which is just awesome i'm i'm so ha oh the slides are blurry someone says hmm uh is the uh is the slides uh, blurry for everybody I'll wait. I hope not. That could be my end. I, I was screwing around with uh, changing the slides around on the screen. Okay, good. Uh, this is the antenna. We'll be talking about this one too. This is the QRP guys tri-band Bertha P. Oh, sorry. This is the <laughs> QRP guys tri-band antenna. This is on Bertha Peak in Big Bear, California. Uh, I have the mast I use, which I'll talk about these on the tabletop. Uh, this is a big mast. It's a 27-foot uh, kite staff. They call it a windsock pole or a kite pole. Actually, 22 feet, which is perfect for that antenna because that's a 17-foot uh, vertical radiating element. Um, great. That is that is great for if you're on like a windy summit. Really, really good. But we'll talk about some other options as well. Isaac, cool. Two dollars. C A D V oh, uh, Canadian. Thank you. Take uh, what is that? A toonie? I appreciate that. V A seven V A E V A seven. So that's a did it da did da 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 did it did it da did da did. Yeah, that's that's kind of a heavy C W load. A little bit. N two S A L radio says I use kite and windsock poles also. Yeah, I I really like them. Um, we'll talk about that. And uh, so that's somebody said nice tripod, not a tripod. It's actually a freestanding pole. And I've got a guy plate that I've guy lined out. And here is the MFJ 1892 T what's re affectionately referred to as the walkabout on W6 CT 240, which is a tiny 1000 foot uh, elevation summit that I had a very difficult time with that antenna. Hey, Christine's in the chat. I saw Lee earlier, so you're both here. <laughs> okay, so that's the slides I have. We're gonna we're gonna turn things over a little bit, and I'm gonna show you here my desktop because I do have the overhead camera installed, and I think it looks fantastic. I don't know about you guys, but okay. So 
starting from the left here, my left, hopefully it's left to you. This is the 1899 by MFJ. This is the AX1 by Elecraft. And then here in the middle with the three legs, the center connector, the coil, and the uh, telescoping element is the Wolf River Coil TIA. Take it along. Ooh, I know what's going on here. Hold on. We'll fix this. I do not want it to focus. I want it to stay just like that. And then lastly, actually, this goes with this guy. And then lastly, we have the QRP guys, Triband Antenna, which I did a build up on this. This is a cool antenna. It's very cheap. I think it was like 20 bucks when I bought it. And I did a build on video. Why this is cool, and I'll, and I'll, I'll take it off here. I've got these two rubber bands on there, is it's a, a, a hand winder. And the yellow wires, there's four of them. These are the radials. And underneath the four radials is a vertical. And then there are the two coils uh, that are wrapped up. And then there's a series of switches. And you switch, you toggle the different switches up and down. And that's what gets you access to 20, 30, and 40 meters. This is a bit finicky on 40 meters to tune. Uh, but 20 and 30, it does really well. So what I'll say generally about most of these is that they're relatively broadbanded in the sense that whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, they're relatively broadbanded in that you will tune it and you're generally okay to move about a little bit uh, up and down a couple of kilohertz, but you will likely need to check into it. It's not as, as narrow as like working a loop and it might not necessarily be as wide as a dipole. I've found. That's my experience. Case in point, that um, stereo speaker dipole we built up, that is fairly broadbanded. It's monobanded, right? It's, it's one band cut to one band. Um, these are all multibanded, but that's very broadbanded. Um, okay, so let me let me start back with the MFJ, and then we'll talk about the rest of these, and then we'll do a little weight comparison because um, obviously the AX1 is probably the lightest one here, if not the QRP guys, but the QRP guys requires a mast, a guying system, and some way to stake out radials. So the way this guy works is ingenious, but I have had issues with this antenna straight up. I will I will say that. So MFJ sells these. These are just telescopic whips that are generally cut for a single band, right? What makes this unit work is that it has this loading coil system. And the loading coils are tapped on these different holes. And where you take this wire, which is a double-ended lead, take this wire, boom, boom, boom. Where you take this wire, you're basically shorting the coil. If you think about this, so this does 10 meters through 80 meters. So what you're seeing is um, a physical, think of it as a physical length of wire. So when you have this connected to the top of the antenna, and you have this trapped out at the topmost, or shorted out is the right term, and the bottommost, you skipped all these coils here. And that gives you 10 meters. And then if you want to work, uh, I think that's 15 and then 17, 20, and then 40s here, like that. Or maybe this is 40. Let's see. No, this is 40. And then you remove it, and now you're working 80 because that engages all the wires that are coiled on here. All this really is is basically a heat, sh a heat shrink kind of tubing, and then they cut off the little spots for the, the, tr the little holes for the loading coils. So that's really what you're doing. So if you want to do 40, you want all the coils from here and out and then the, the telescopic mask. You don't want the 80 meter portion. So you just plop in the little plug and there you go. Now, tuning this is pretty straightforward and, and I'll display, I'll, I'll just do that right now since it's, it's pretty easy to do on this guy. So what I'll do, Um, do I have a clip? I might have to... Oh, I've got a clip. Okay. We can probably make this work. Let me slide this stuff. Away. 
fuck did I just send for? So what I do is connect this guy up here. Take a just a clip. This is a, a springy clip. Connect it on the bottom and kind of pivot it down so it doesn't turn. And you want the antenna to try and stay centered. This is going to be, yeah, that's fine. And then I'll raise the aerial. 40 is probably the only thing live right now, so we'll try 40. Okay. And I've got a camera right over the top of this, so it's not going to be the best. And it's going to get real fidgety here, I think. This is not the best clip for this either, but we're just going with what we got. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so we're on 40 right now. Um, I've got the trap line, or not the trap line, but the loading coil line in shorting out 80 meters. So let's do a quick SWR check. Well, that can't be right. This says the SWR is flat. There we go. That's much better. Okay. So what it's trend, if you can see this, hopefully you can see this. <laughs> um, all these little spikes were me touching it. So I'm going to wait, let's see. So it's just riding at 10 to 1. So I'm going to lower this. Did it do anything? It might be because I've got it too, connect, too close to us. Let's see. This might be a bad example. We might have to use the, uh, I need it to free stand a bit. Is this actually 40 meters or am I screwing around? Is it 20? No. No, it is not. Let's go to 80 because I may be screwing around with this the wrong way. Okay, the noise went up, so that's generally a good symbol sign. Could just be because I've got it with all this electronics around, it's not going to work. Well, <laughs> so I generally have pretty good uh, time tuning this one, but we're going to go to uh, the Wolf River, which I know is going to tune up a lot easier. So let's leave it at that. Let's turn this guy off for a second, and we'll talk about the AX1. Got to love doing these live, right? Oh, you know what? Nope. That might be why. Hold on. I take it back. Let's try this again. <laughs> we'll get it. We got time. We got plenty of time. Can you guys see it okay? No, yeah. Don't use this as a mounting system. What you'd normally do is you'd have the kickstand legs up, but if I do that, you can't look directly on this. So that's fine. We'll leave this alone. It does work. You can take my word for it. As far as tuning up, as far as the performance you're going to get out of it, not, not so great. Come on. Okay. So let's get through all these antennas, and then we'll go back, and, and I'll show you what the Wolf River's like. Because that is probably the easiest one to tune. 
next to the AX1, which is the second one. Um, the AX1 only supports three bands, and it does it with this switch that's right here, which is 20 meters and 17 meters. And you can basically what this antenna does is it um, kind of expects you to use it, uh, use the tuner that's on board in the KX3 and the KX2 to get the match you're looking for. So you, you click it to 17, but you're using the tuner to get you the 15 match, right? Uh, very similar to the uh, MFJ, but this guy has a kickstand that comes with it. And you slide it on like this. I'm not going to try and tune this guy because generally you need to use the, uh, the kickstand on the radio as well to, to make this work. But this guy is actually very stable. So you just tighten this guy up, and you're good to go. Um, and you can you can send this up. The problem, as uh, K6UDA already said, is this is over $100. And in fact, I, I've got a, a website for that. I'll, I'll show you briefly. That's the Wolf River antennas. We'll get back to that guy in a second. So the Elecraft website for this guy is $99 for just this, just this guy, okay? And again, you guys are seeing the, the magic behind here. The The bipod attachment is $31.95. The tripod adapter is another $24.95. And then a replacement whip piece such as this is $10. So that's an Elecraft price for a product that uh, I did a review on. Um, I was at a very noisy location with very low elevation. And I, I didn't do that great. I, I think I got maybe, I got one contact out of it. Not not that great compared to the Wolf River, for example, which is the one I'm going to go to next. But this is a fraction of the weight. This is a fraction of, of the total weight. So it really depends on what you're, what you're all about. Um, I, I talked about it on the video. I, I think that this antenna fills a specific role of, Put it in a bag, you know, take it down like this. I actually have a little zip, zipper bag that, that fits it perfectly with the bipod. And, you know, next to the radio, there's there's nothing to it. This is the radial that you connect to the lug. I have a ground lug on the side of the antenna mount. And that that's all you need, basically, with your mic or your key. So it's extremely, it's extremely good for what it is, but... It's kind of expensive, so I, I, I expect the comments that people say about it. Now, okay, so the Wolf River, um, let's do this before we, before we dive right into the Wolf River. Come on, buddy. Okay, so pounds and ounces. Um, this is five point one ounces for the thing, including the Ziploc bag that's holding the radial. The MFJ with the cable is seven point one. I have a ra uh, radial that I have tied on this cord keeper, which is a bit heavy. So that's going to be just under a pound at, at 9.2. Can you see? Oh, you can't see this. Can you see that? No, oh, I apologize. We didn't test that part out. You can take my word for it. The Wolf River, though. Let's throw this guy on here. So you got that. You got your coil. You got your reading element, and then you got your tripod mount. Oh, why did you change on me? So it's two pounds, uh, seven ounces. Okay, for the Wolf River, which you're you you're basically carrying three times the weight, but I think you get multiple times the antenna. So how this guy works, which is pretty ingenious, is you have a 
tripod system here that goes in like that. You know, I realize I'm probably not going to be able to tune this one up either because I'm going to have to lay down the ground radials. I'm going to have to go back and futz with the, the uh, MFJ some more. So this is the tripod for this guy. And how you mount the radials is they mount underneath these screws, just like that. Really, really easy. The coil goes on top of that, which this coil, uh, how this works is same kind of principle as the MFJ with the, the little plugs. What you do is you loosen this screw, this one's already pretty loose, and you slide this collar, which has a, a metal connection here, up and down this post. The longer you make this, the more of these coils you're engaging into the, the active radiating portion of the antenna. And the least that you involve, so if you slide it up like that, um, this gets you like 20 meters, probably more like around there it gets you 20 meters. Uh, then you kind of drive this guy down again, that gets you 40, and you drive this down and that gets you to 80. Okay, this goes uh, 10 through 80. And really, all you need to do to get 10 is take the, the whip that it comes with and mount it on the tripod, and, and that's what you use. And then you control the tuning by sliding in and out the elements. This antenna is the Take It Along by Wolf River. Let me show you that. So this is Wolf River's website. And they, and they, uh, they recommend that you can... God, again with the... Uh, Sorry, uh, they recommend that you can um, you can mount this on a car off the bottom, actually like that, off the bottom um, on a screwdriver, like a mount for an HF antenna. And you can use this kind of like a manual screwdriver antenna. You can do that on a car. You can do that um, pretty much anywhere out in the park, whatever. It's a take it along. This is the kit here. It comes with the radials. And let's see. Oh, look, hey. We've got a lot. Uh, uh, KB1HQS, who's got a YouTube video on this. Lots of different YouTubers have this. This is what it looks like when it's set up. It's under three pounds. Uh, very easy to carry along. The hardest thing to carry is the coil, which is the biggest part. But that's not that bad. Let's see. Price-wise... So I have the Take It Along, which is this guy, which is $130, which I think is very reasonable for what you get. I, um, I think this is one of the better options for a vertical. They also have a Mega, which... I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna comment on that. But they have a soda. It's a little baby soda, and that does ten through forty meters, and that's a hundred dollars. That probably shaves a pound, a half a pound off of the total. So if you're if you're really conscious of the weight, you can go with that. I I really like this antenna. Actually, I um I took this to work, and on my lunch break, I grabbed lunch. And there's an upper portion to eat your lunch. And I set it up. The only thing that looks dorky is I'm stretching out radial wires and stuff like that. Um, it little dorky with the radials, I'll be honest. If you can get those elevated, that's another comment. If you can use like uh, tent stakes or something that uh, you can stake into the ground and tightly, not tightly enough to, to snap the connectors or anything like that, but get them elevated, they're going to perform a little bit better if they're just kind of strung across the ground. They'll still work, but they're always going to be better if they're up off the ground. Uh, K8MRD says, The whole antenna coax radio and battery fits in my backpack when I do parks on the air. Indeed, yeah. And uh, I have a under... So without the drone, my wet, my dry weight for my soda bag... Actually, you can't see this, but the QRP, uh, QRP guy's tri-band antenna was what I was carrying. With a fishing rod hole this guy japanese fly rod as my antenna mast i was under 15 pounds my entire uh dry weight 
for doing soda activations, which is very light. And that included, you know, some snacks and food and water and all that stuff. So if you take out the QRP guys and the fishing rod and you put this in, you're probably going to add a pound or two. That's nothing. I'm still under, well under 20 pounds, which I'm probably going to be doing from now on. Yeah, K6 UDA, uh, you, you had too heavy of a pack. And I know what that's like because uh, I, I had to do that. Well, I didn't have to do it. But the first time I went out with Jerry, that's what I did. And uh, I will never, ever have an overloaded pack again. That was that was a bit crazy. All right. Um, let me show you what I did with the radials. So this is generally my, my work radio bag. Most of my radio stuff fits in this guy. Not the coil, though. It's a little too big. I took those same coil winders that I used for the um, the MFJ, and I just put them on these little smaller coil winders that I 3D printed. And this works fine. This is uh, perfectly perfectly fine for, for taking these out. They're a little bit bigger, but I like them because they do a figure eight wrap, which is nice so that you can keep everything from getting tangled. I hate looping stuff and then Velcroing it because it adds a, a weird twist to all the cables which is no bueno for doing any activation where you got to quickly roll things out and then pull things back in you just grab this guy pull the bottom and hold this in fact i'll just show you why the hell not i'm actually um i went to walmart and i bought hair ties like ladies hair ties and that's what holds these on just flick the hair tie off uh, grab the bottom and then just pull it down that's all it takes and then just wrapping it up is just another figure eight back in Radials are an important part of the vertical system, so um, having a solution that makes it easy is going to be very, very helpful. You're going to prefer. Um, you will like life if your radial uh, deployment is easy and not frustrating. And they go right back on like that. A little tight, but yeah. And then that goes back in the bag. Very, very easy. Okay. Um, why don't we just tune... I'll show you what it looks like on the AX, the AX1, actually. I know that tune's pretty straight. And then we'll let the, uh, the auto tune handle it. Because that, I can get to lie flat while I tune it. If you want to see more on that, um, I do have a review for the AX1 out. Oh, Christ. I know why it wasn't tuning. I am an idiot. No, I apologize. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I will make the MFJ tune right now. I didn't have the radial dragged out. That's why. So if anybody said that in the chat, you won the uh, you won the stream game. Don't do that to your radio, guys. Apparently, don't do live streams. It's bad for radios, too. Ask me. I know. I'm going to sit. I could probably tune a fish with that MFJ uh, tuner. Okay. So this is my, you're not going to be able to see that on that screen. So that's the radial for this guy. Just a simple banana plug. That connects here to the ground, or the, whoop, the return, like that. Let's get that guy centered. Let me drag out the ground wire a second. The radial, I mean. All right. Well, no wonder she wouldn't tune. If you go with a small gauge wire, you get a light show with your QSO. Uh-oh. Oh, and now it's going to go into its pissed off mode. This radio gets mad if it's in the cold, I found. And apparently it's cold right now. Let's try to restart it. Craig Walker, indeed. Lots of uh, elevation in Colorado. Turn off! I pulled this out of the bag and I charged it the other day. And it 
does this death cycle where it comes up with it transmitting, or at least it says it's transmitting. Okay, now it's working. Woo! No plug. Does that do anything for you? Some activity. Let's see if we can shorten this guy. There we go. Okay. So, see the dip? Hopefully you see the dip. Come on, baby. Let me adjust the, the zoom until you can see the dip. Otherwise, that's going to be no fun. Okay. So, you see this takeaway? We got it close, but it's still too short now. So, we need to elongate, right? So we are at 7.193. It found a dip. We'll wait for it to go back through again. Nothing like doing a live stream where you can look like an idiot and not have the radio connected. Maybe I too can get yelled at in my comments field. Okay, so now we made it. It kind of a little funky. We've got a weird little dip there. Uh, let's get her a little bit longer and see what happens. Yeah, so most of these verticals are relatively broadbanded. No, I did it the wrong way. Whoop. Back, Jesus. <laughs> Back away. Let's see what happens with this guy. No, don't do it. I don't know. I think I was getting too close to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm affecting it with my range. Let me get my beer and step back. Uh, in Colorado, you can walk around above four, yeah, 1,400K before breakfast and still make it to work on time. Dude, Colorado is... That is a state when you get off the plane, you feel you're breathing. <laughs> you feel the fact that you're breathing. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll keep playing with this. So this is two. So I need to bring the center over. So that means I shorten, right? Am I doing this right, Mom? Yep, I think I got it. I'm a visual thinker. I gotta visualize with my hands. <laughs> Let me get my beard step back. Yes. Okay, there you go. So that's the bottom of the of the drop. That's a that's a pretty wide. What are we at? Pretty wide. Pretty wide for this. Global Bob Broadcast Network. You sir are correct. That is one feature that the KX3 I wish had. This uh this radio for that reason is extremely handy extremely handy i got a uh, i'll be making a video soon on it i got a chameleon p loop and i was just you know to just playing around with the tuning knob and you can see it just moving along so so cool hey you will you be getting into ham internet i.e internet yes okay I've got a, uh, we've got to pause here because I think we've got a winner coming up here. I have to refresh the Discord. Hold on, everybody. 116 and 130 people. Here we go for the winner in one minute and 49 seconds for the Quirky QRP. You still have time to get in on that. Go in the Discord. It's only going to take you a minute to sign up. Take the link that Zach's been posting or take the link in the description. Go to the giveaways, hashtag giveaways, and click the little horn. I can stop this room. I'll leave it there. 
I have I have so many amazing friends in the ham radio community, including all of you watching. But yes, W five KUB, we've got K six UDA, we've got some other people, we've got some soda friends, we've got all kinds of people in here. All right. 120, 48 seconds to go for the Corky QRP. I'm really liking the energy I have when I'm standing up. I've got to figure out this green screen thing because I like to move. I'm all about moving. when I, I have a standing desk at work. If you could imagine that I need more energy, I stand at work and, and scream at people. I don't scream. I'm actually really nice. What do we got? 33 seconds. Uh, today's beer is the Elysian Avatar Jasmine IPA. Whoop, that's not a very good shot. Uh, only 60 likes and 241 people watching. I would appreciate it if you give me a like, but you know, if you can't be bothered to click the thing, I understand. AJ6DR, AJ6DR wins it. And I've got to adjust... Okay, hold on. <laughs> it's much easier to do this. Uh, we'll just hide the first one. There we go. Okay. So AJ6, AJ6DR, uh, send me a message on Discord and I'll get your address. William Canfield asks, why are there always two dislikes? Because there are two people that watch my videos that just hate life and don't enjoy watching me talk about ham radio and drink beer, apparently. Uh, Richard uh, Finnery asks, have you started classes with the Long Island CW Club? Yeah, I've been to a lot of them. And I, and I try and go to the, uh, to the club meetings. I really like their club meetings. I've just been really busy with work. I have a bunch of uh, commitments that I've got to take care of. <laughs> it's all right. Hey, you know what's the great thing about uh, dislikes on YouTube? I'll, I'll let you in a little secret. Uh, the Discord or the dislikes still give you presence in the algorithm. So the fact that they even clicked it means that they're engaged with your video and that bumps you up in the YouTube algorithm. So they're not hurting me at all. Doing nothing hurts me more than doing than giving me a thumbs down so i'm not saying go give me a thumbs down everybody but uh helping me with the thumbs up is as appreciated oh my god really we went up to 114 likes thank you very much everybody i appreciate that okay what else do we got to talk about we're almost done I'll, I'll i'll do the kx oh no you know what we'll do call-ins let me let me just get the call-ins going boop 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 so if you want to call in, it's really simple. You just use that phone number and use that code. Um, I'll play around with some of the antennas here. Oh, let's get the... I'm going to end up killing part of my, my stream if I do it that way. Let's go back to the overhead. And if you guys don't want to call in because you're on your phone watching this, I understand too. I'm going to swap this out for the, uh, the AX1. Good news is now that I have this uh, radial connected, I don't need to mess with another one. I only give thumbs up for one dollar, man. I give you a chance every week to win amazing ham radio stuff. Oh, I should go back, shouldn't I? Uh, two minutes, forty-five seconds. We should clean this up. We should end the uh, signal stick uh, giveaway live here before. Is somebody on hold? <laughs> That'd be awesome if somebody was on hold. No, nope, nobody's on hold. So uh, if somebody wants to call again, I am monitoring that now. If you called in earlier, sorry about that. You're welcome to call in now. K6 UDA is dropping a video tomorrow, the return of Alexa. Oh, somebody's calling. We got two minutes on the giveaway. Hello, caller. Can you hear me? You gotta mute the live stream for a second. How's it going? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can't. Oh, that's a, a voice that's familiar to me. 
Hey, Josh, this is Tom, W5KUB. Hey, how's it going, Tom? How are you doing today? Oh, pretty good, man. Oh, hey, you're doing pretty good, man. It, your show is kind of late for me. and Yeah. And, uh, man, I you know, I think about it about mid-show, and I run in here and try to get on, you know? I appreciate that. I always appreciate that. Real quick, let me yeah. say thank you to Thomas Turner. I appreciate the, uh, the super chat. So uh, what do you think about these portable antennas? I know you just got off a cruise line. Could you, uh, you uh, Tom was on a cruise recently. Do you think you could uh, stow one of these away and deploy it on a cruise ship maybe? Well, you know, I, some of the hands are telling me they operate uh, on, the, on the back end at the top of the ship, and they take stuff like that with them. Uh, I didn't want to try it. Um, you know, I figured I wouldn't be able to string anything up. And you got all these people that will be looking at you like you're a weirdo, you know. Uh, us hams are weirdos, you know, when it comes to stuff like that. So what do you have any portable antennas right now? No, you know, I I don't have any. Of course, uh, uh, it didn't take but five minutes to put something together. Sure. Uh, just like when I, I worked the Heard Island expedition here uh, last year, I just grabbed me a piece of wire and made me a delta loop for 10, 10 megs and threw it up in about 15 minutes and worked to Heard Island. Mm-hmm. Let me do a quick shout but, out. We've got a uh, – yeah. did the winner – seems like the – oh, we're going to have a winner right now for the signal stick and – Crude 70, K-E-0-S-T-T, just one. So congratulations to Crude 70. You are the winner for the signal stick antenna. And I'll give you a coupon code. I'll send I'll send you a message in the coupon code, Kate, so wait for that. Okay, sorry, Tom. What were you saying? No, that's okay. That's okay. Well, you know, uh, hey, I'm getting away from all these portable antennas because I'm, I'm moving now more toward – you know, remote base and things like that. You know, and yeah, and you know, you're uh, you're seeing us on a show. You you and I were starting to talk more about the uh, the uh, thing we're beta testing the the Rig Pi, which is the Raspberry Pi remote station controller, which I used from the cruise ship last week, and it worked great. Yeah. Now, I... Hey, hey. By the way, Josh, Josh, one thing, and, and you'll be interested. In this, uh, probably you can help me uh, this this week Tuesday night. Uh, I should have by Tuesday my uh, my DV Mega Cast. That's that IP radio that does uh, DMR, uh, D Star, and Fusion all in one little box, you know. And I'll have that. I'll have that. Uh, I think uh, in the next day or so. And um, are you getting ready to get on the digital? Uh, really- yeah, yeah, I need to, and of course, I I had I, I got on D Star uh, years ago, and it was so uh, uh, kind of difficult. Uh, I've kind of got away from it, but this neat little box makes the thing simple, you know. And uh, hey, you'll be able to run this thing mobile. You can take this little box if you got a hotspot in your car. You can run I, DMR and I do that and all today, that, you know, actually, from the car. I do that yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a, a simple little uh, LTE hotspot which uh, Wi Fi's into my my radio hotspot and then i can use my asu system fusion radio or my dmr radio and i can crisscross so i should mention ethan if you could or zach if you have it uh the ham radio crash course has now linked their yesu system fusion reflectors with their dmr talk group so if you join one uh through a hotspot you can talk you're talking to both so we have meshed those two technologies together so i'm very excited about that um, so yeah, we we can work that out with you too, Tom. Okay, great, and I, I and really be interested in doing that. And and uh, you know we uh, we webcast our drive to Dayton live every year, and uh. it's a ten hour drive. And boy, we're going to have all kinds of instead of in addition to streaming, boy, we're going to have D Star Fusion and DMR in there. Plus, we're going to have remote act, remote control of uh, all the HF bands. We're going to have two operators just in a truck making contacts all the way up there. I am very excited. I will uh, I will be watching you as I hop on an airplane and fly in comfort from California to Dayton. <laughs> but uh, I am very excited well, to see that. Well, look, and, and tell everybody, too. I mean, you know, you're a member of our show now on Tuesday yeah. nights. And tell everybody, too, if they get up to Dayton, you're gonna, you can camp out there in our booth. We're going to be in Building 2. Uh, we've got a really nice big uh, spot in Building Two. That's the same place that Icom's in there. 
uh, Bob Heil from uh, Heil Sound. He's going to be moving in next door to us this year. So we're in building two, and uh, come by and see us. And, Josh, uh, you know, you can you know, camp out there. And, and, hey, while I'm out walking around, uh, you can grab people and talk to them and put them on a show. So that's what I'm, I'm thinking about doing. I'm thinking about doing some stuff like that. So, uh, guys, if you're going to Dayton, uh, I will be there. And uh, Tom already has a booth, so I'm going to use that as my home base that I'll be meeting you, and we'll set up different stuff. I, of course, I have to go see everything, of course. But I'll be using uh, Tom's booth as kind of a home base for, for starting things and meeting up with people. So if you're going, uh, send me a message and, and we can talk. Hey, Tom, I got a, I got a couple of calls, I yeah. think. Hold on. I want to – let me okay. double check before I let okay. you go here. Sure. Um, but I sure. want to make sure we're, we're getting to them. I want to give people – uh, yeah, I've got a couple of people sure. waiting, so I'm gonna. Okay, hey, I'm gonna hey, let you go. Just, just real quick, let me yes. let me just say this. Just invite everybody to come over Tuesday night. Oh, please. W5KUB dot com, eight o'clock p.m. Central Time. W5KUB because you're one of our co-hosts on that show, and yep. they can get double of you every week. Thank, thanks, Josh. I'll see I, you Tuesday. I don't know that people need any more of me than what they already get, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, W5KUB dot com. I am there. I I was actually the host. Uh, two weeks ago now, and that is up on the YouTube channel. So if you go to W5KUB, you can watch the stream we did, which was great because I had K6UDA and Dave Kassler on, and we talked about uh, kit building and uh, homebrew, which I thought was a lot of fun. So if you didn't watch that, go watch great. that now. 73. I'll see, you, I'll see you Tuesday night. All right, Tom. Take it easy. All right, bye. All right, next caller. Okay, caller, can you hear me? Hey, Hoss. Hey, how's it going? It's Christine. Hey, Christine. Hey, <laughs> going good. Happy Friday. <laughs> Thank you very much. How are you doing? Did you get your, uh, you got your license now, right? Not yet. I'm still studying. <laughs> All right. What's going on? Uh, not much. Me and Lee are just chilling, uh, having a relaxing night, watching your live stream right now, uh, sipping on some, what is this? Uh, it's Knob Creek. Knob, Knob Creek. I saw that <laughs> earlier. I am Urban. also a fan of Knob Creek, yeah. Lee. Good choice. Nice. Hey, um, you never answered my question. When are you going to have a party stream? A party stream? Well, you got to tell me what a party stream is, I guess. What does that mean? <laughs> well... <laughs> You know, you were, you were mentioning earlier um, when you have your live stream, it seems like, you know, it feels like you have a bunch of people in your garage kind of um, atmosphere. Oh, um, uh, okay. Maybe <laughs> sometimes. You're saying have people uh, over maybe. to the – on the stream. Like have uh -huh. people physically come out here? Mm hmm Or oh, somewhere. Yeah. yeah. No, that's actually – so we, I still want to do a meetup. I just got to wait for work to clear up. And also it's a little cold. I'm thinking once it gets a little bit warmer, we'll do something. Maybe after Dayton, we'll, we'll meet up That's somewhere. Fair. And we can do a live stream from there. That'd be a lot of fun. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, for anybody Thanks, trying to call in, to that's hi. the phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Hey, just Christine. To it was hi. good to talk thank to you. I heard Lee in the background. Uh, and always, Lee, thank you so thank much you. for the memes and the hard work you do in the meme community on the Discord chat. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, the ham ham radio meme warfare center. Yeah, do it. as uh, as uh, <laughs> master at arms of of the the meme zone. I appreciate the the effort you're putting in. <laughs> Thanks. All right, buddy. All right. Uh, both of you, take Thank it you easy. Gosh. See ya. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Okay, next one. We got a lot of callers now. Awesome. Oh, we got okay. A hey, caller. How you doing? Hello, it's Nigel Lawrence. I'm calling from the UK. I'm actually a dual call sign, KG0PL on your side of the phone, uh, G0MEJ. Local time is uh, 04, two hours in the morning here. Just want to say hello. How did you get on with your Ubix? Ah. I thought it was a ground problem. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, there you go. I thought we were sat there watching it and thought, yeah, it must be a you know, ground were, problem. Were you there. one of the you, ones helping me out on the chat? Um, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> we got it sorted. Thank you. Yeah. What was, uh, yeah. What, what was the, I, I've got a, Nigel, right? First name Nigel? I'm, I'm, yes, that's right. Oh, that's excellent. Right. Got it. Okay. Well, so are you, are you a Ubit, yeah. uh, Ubit X owner right now? Uh, no, I, I've got a Ubix, uh, I've got a Bread X 40. Uh -huh. So, uh, but I am going, to, I am going to, uh, save my money up and get a, a Ubix as well. Mm -hmm. So, 
and I learned some um, um, some mods. One of the things I did do when I didn't have on my uh, my Birdex was um, uh, rust polarity diode protection, but I've now put that on. And I think um, that's a good idea. There we go. That's yeah. The, so let yeah, me ask you a question. With, a with simple re- little... Go ahead. Sorry, what was that? For for a little simple cost of uh, a few pence or, or a cent if you in your money, yep. it's worth it. That's a that's a very good way of looking at it. A diode costs nothing, next to nothing. And if it protects your radio, particularly with something like a, a bid X forty or micro, which is very uh very problematic if you if you reverse polarity on it, I think it's a good good install. Let me yeah. ask you a question. With so, regards uh, to yeah. portable antennas, do you have a portable antenna that you use? Do you do soda or anything like that? Um, I'm going to be well with the idea with the uh, with the Bertex. I went to the Ubix. I've got a fishing pole, mm-hmm. uh, 33 feet in your money or, or 10 meters. I've got a dipole, uh, 40 meter dipole. Over here in the UK, we're not got the full bandwidth like you have. Yeah. And nor do we have the power like like you have as well. I mean, we're only on as I've got a full license from a G zero MEJ. I would have full my maximum power we can run on uh, on um, a lot of the HF band is 400 watts. Right. The kits is a bit of a disadvantage where you guys a kilowatt, uh, no problem. <laughs> uh, that is a very yeah, I mean. very it's a very interesting philo- uh, philosophical difference between the countries and, and there's many countries that share that they have power restrictions on the levels you go up. Um, I I yeah. find that interesting. I find that fascinating. So. What uh, what do you think? Are you thinking you're gonna drag? You're gonna take the uh, U-bid X out there, or or the forty that you have, or maybe do a uh, soda activation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I live in my county is in Cumbria, mm-hmm. and uh, we 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 got the Lake District, and uh, we got the we call them fells here locally. Is uh, it means uh, mountain. It comes from the old Norse word, Viking word. So uh, yes, we do. Uh, good. Uh, I'm a good lady wife. She's also licensed to Echo Zero, oh, Juliet nice. Bravo Papa. And uh, got a long story. If you watch uh, Amateur Logic TV or Ted Randall, sure. I've uh, uh, explained uh, how I got my U.S. license a long time ago, but uh, I've never set foot in the United States. So we, that would be interesting to some of your viewers, your listeners. How did, you get, how did I get a U.S. ticket when I'm a British guy? So you never set foot in the United States. So you must have had some VECs that, uh, that did a video stream or something like that for you. No, nope. well, there's a club in uh, in the in northern uh, Britain, northern England, that's called the uh, Ripon Amateur Radio Club, or also known as the Dali Amateur Radio Club. Uh-huh. They're a set of uh, VACs, so uh, ah. I actually set foot. Okay. Yeah. Oh, very good. So uh, we we so we um, it's for me it's around about eighty miles there and eighty miles back, so mm-hmm. I'd stay overnight really to go and do it. And um, fifteen dollars, whereas the British license is a lot more expensive to do. <laughs> yeah, fifteen dollars, and really, that's just the uh, application fee. It's it's just the the fee to do the testing. There's no there's no uh, profit or anything in there. That's At least, right, yeah. because it's yeah, all private. So. It, it's all privately ran or or publicly non. Yeah. It's not governmently funded, the t- testing. It's all done by private uh, individuals. So that's great, Nigel. I appreciate you calling in. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. I have one more caller, and I think we're going to wrap no, it up. No, Did you have another question or anything you want to say? Uh, make note of my phone number because it'll say UK phone number plus 44 United Kingdom. I got it. Well, don't don't give time, the whole thing because you're, you're live right now. So <laughs> I got it. Yeah. So when next time I call you, you see plus four four. Uh, oh yeah, I got a call from the UK. <laughs> yeah, I, I can do you one better. When people call in, I can actually type in a name. So I got Nigel G zero M E Z or sorry M E Z J. M E J. What was the? the I'm what, a U.S. call. What US was the call, uh, Kilo UK Golf call again? Zero Papa Lima. Kilo and? Golf Zero Papa Lima. Zero. Yeah, Fort Collins, Colorado, but I'm not there. <laughs> okay, excellent. Yeah. Okay, well, I got yeah. you. I got you in so, the, uh, the the live stream log, if you will. <laughs> yeah. All right, Nigel. Oh, it's well, good talking to you, go. buddy. Thanks a lot. All right. Enjoy. Take it easy. 
All right, I got another caller that's been patiently waiting. Let's see who it is. Uh, dollars to donuts. Is this uh, is this Bob? Caller, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, brother, how you doing? Very good. How you doing, buddy? I am awesome. Great show. Oh, thank Great you. Great show. Thank you know you what? You, you're bringing a lot of good antennas, a lot of good mix into it. I am particularly impressed by the mounting system of that MFJ antenna. Oh, the 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 metal clip, the uh, the the spring clip. Oh yeah. Well, it it it's it, I I use clip. it for two things. I use it both as an antenna clip, and then I also use it for a grip strengthener. I like to get in there and, and really work mm-hmm. on my my right hand handshake hand, you know. Oh yeah, that is awesome. That is great. I, I do no, have good to say, I, and I go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say I, I do. I want to repeat that I maybe didn't get to hit it up enough. That the Wolf River coil is really really nice to set up. It is a very nice antenna. Very easy to tune too. I'm very happy with that. That that looked really interesting. I have one very similar to it. It is a called a Super Antennas. Yes. Um, M two, I think. Yeah, there was the motorized on, if I understand correctly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it, and that's a pretty good antenna. Um, I like yours. I do like it. And for a hundred bucks, not a bad deal. No. 130 so, uh, bucks uh pretty much shipped to your door is not bad for uh 10 through 80 again which is a little bit different from some of the the standard vertical cell standing uh I don't know I, I I'm I'm kind of I'll, I'll hold this up again the MFJs are, are I don't want to say they're a novelty but they're they're so compromised and they're so focused on the lightweight that I think they're they're not as functional as they really should be. And and I, I think that that Wolf River is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know what? I would love to try one. Um, <laughs> maybe I got to get a hold of the Wolf River people. I, but, I uh, did buy hey, that. You know what? I did you buy and... that. that. That one I bought because it was exactly yeah. what I was looking for. And I was like, I just got to buy it. So I, I did. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I might uh, might bite the bullet on that one. Uh, you, hey, you know what I you know what I got here up and running? Is it? Uh, I got Alexa? a Wires X node. <laughs> I am the administrator for. Uh, it's called the K six I O K node. Okay. And uh, that's about that's the video that's coming out tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, it's uh, it's all about the differences between what you get on a hot spot under C4 FM and, uh, and what wires X is all about. Oh, and I'm so kind of going to dive into, are you on, on I'm HRI dive 200? Into wires X. Yes. On an HRI 200. Oh, okay. And, uh, we have, we have this one part because it's not my node really. Mm-hmm. Um, we have it parked on America rag chew. So really, if anybody wants to hit me up on America Rag Chew, I am almost always on there. And I will turn on my FT2, which uh, <laughs> which you talked me into buying again. That's right, I did. And, uh, and thank you for doing that because you know what? Um, uh, I grew to love this radio. I, I, so yeah, thank you. I, 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 I wanted... When we talked about it the first time, I was like, I gotta understand, I gotta get in his head and understand what he doesn't like about it because I'm just not seeing it. I do want to say, if you have the chance, we do have a, a Wires X room for the Hammer to Crash Course. We're trying to get it all linked up. It's uh, four five three two one. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, whip, that's I'll, where uh, Whip Grease prowls. So you got to be careful if you go there. That's where Whip Grease lives. That's his domain. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Well, I know you want to wrap this up, so I'm gonna I'm gonna blow out of here. And uh, I've got uh, I got grandkids here. I got a uh, got a seven year old birthday today. Okay. So um, I don't know if I'm gonna make Discord tonight, but I will talk to you soon. And check your phone because I did send you a very funny text. Anyway, my friend, um, 
seven three and to everybody else there on the uh, on the chat and the live stream have a great night seven three thank you all for all the live chats <laughs> yeah buddy you love and, the discord uh, after all chats. The super chats yeah all the super chats there hey that's uh, I, and i get half of that because i told them all the super chats. Oh. <laughs> okay the checks in the mail <laughs> Uh, Franklin Lewis, right, too. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate this. And and I think something okay. should be in the mail All for right. Franklin. I hope you get it. Okay, Bob, it's great talking to you, and I, I hope I catch up with you later. I'll go check the, the, the uh, text. I see it, but I'll go read it later. I do have okay. one last. So All there right, is right. a caller that has one of the weirdest phone numbers that I want to – I'm, I'm cautious about this, but I, I have to I have to check it. So, um, I'm Bob, you got a second? Yeah. Are you there? I'm just going to add that this yeah, other caller, too. So you just stay on the line. Okay. Hey, caller, go ahead. New caller. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. <laughs> oh, it's Whip Grease. Oh, my God. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Oh, my God. How's it going, Whip Grease? <laughs> oh, man, it's been crazy. Work's just been killing me. So, yeah, I've been missing the missing the live stream, but I, <laughs> I booked it off for tonight to watch it. It was great. Good to see you, Bob. Hosh, you're doing a great job. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you being the, uh, hey, the, the Canadian domain for the Ham Radio Crash Course uh, Wires X Room. That's right. Yeah, it's good. We got that thing linked up. Looks like it's working good. I actually bought a DV4 Mini to do the link, but then uh, Ethan had got that up. So, hey, that's awesome. We're uh, all working together and getting stuff moving forward. Yep, and I, I think Lethan, uh, Ethan, Ar- Lethan. Ethan already posted the link to the uh, to all our digital, but I'll post it in the description. Hey, too and for what, the people to what watch was the room that. number again? Four five three two one. What was your name? Four five three two one. Linking now. Well, no, wrong keyboard. Damn. I hate when I do that. <laughs> I, I, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> hey, Hosh, I, I was going to say. Now I have a Windows computer in here for the first time in ten years. Go ahead, buddy. So, I have to. I have to remember. Whip grease. What was, Hosh, what's I was going to say with the. Uh, uh, with the the antenna selection there, it's uh, it was good to see all that stuff. I had looked at a bunch of that stuff when I was first trying to go portable. Uh, all the RFI that's here, you know, we're we're usually working out in the sticks. Yeah. Uh, more often than not. <clears throat> Sorry, the radio's going off on the fusion here. Yeah, working out in the sticks more more often than than not, just because we can't work here. Yeah. Um, and one of the first antennas I got was a Comet. Uh, no, yeah, it was a Comet 250B. It's not really portable, but we were using them on light stands, and then went into a buddy pole, and then into a chameleon. And I gotta say, like for 20 meter, they'll get you by. But, I mean, they should really underline, bold, and put in neon lights the compromise antenna yeah. component of all of this stuff. Because we, like, I, I do you, you remember I showed you the, uh, like, yes. the FT8, yeah, uh, the PSK reporter? Yep, yep. And then going to an inverted V, like, I think the best money spent if you if you don't have to backpack is getting one of those fiberglass masks and just running a, a El Cheapo inverted V. But we've been doing that just throwing a wire up a tree, and I realize not everybody has trees where they're going. The only um, problem, but the amount... I was going to say, the only problem with, with going full-time inverted V is you do need the elevation. Verticals require less elevation. And I, I didn't talk about that enough on the stream, and I should have spent more time with that. Dipoles, they want to be at least a quarter wave up off the ground, even the uh, inverted V. Even though it behaves more like a vertical, it still wants to be up high. Verticals have less of that problem. That's the one of the advantages. Well, the benefit of being up here in Canada is we have full-size trees in a lot full of Full-size places. trees, yes, yeah. yeah like, yeah. I'm kind of <laughs> on the border on the prairies here, but, right. um, you know, like, and, and so you can't always throw one up. Like, I totally understand, you know, the, 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 the use case for the compromise antennas, but I don't think that people truly understand just how much of a compromise these things are. Because when we moved to the inverted V, that thing was... When we initially tested it, it was only 30 feet up, and that thing blew away the infed dummy load that I was running. It blew away the buddy pole. It just absolutely destroyed everything. So the comet, interestingly enough, yeah. we, I, the comet's a tough thing. I, I'm, I'm not defending the comet, the in comet any way, but almost anything will beat that thing. 
Yeah, and but the thing was is that the chameleon, right? Like it, it's the the impasse antenna that's designed to be throw it in your backpack, break it down. You've got your whips, everything's good to go. But you know, like all of these antennas, all of these compromised antennas, like we we call them magic antennas because they they purport to do all of these things that they just really don't do. Right, they, they'll work. They work in a pinch. But I think like the one thing I wish somebody had told me at the start, which is sort of the reason I wanted to call in was just how much those compromised antennas make a difference, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you go to a full, you know, half-wave dipole, you take the time to set it up, even if it's an inverted V, whatever it is, it's going to absolutely smoke everything. So if you've got the opportunity, it never hurts to just throw, you know, that, it was a, that, that little winder, just throw on some uh, wound-up wire and a ballon oh, in your yeah. backpack for when you can use it because it makes a massive, massive difference. Yeah, so I, I I do wanna I do wanna throw one comment out there with with that. If you have to run inverted V, that's fine. But if you haven't ran a properly horizontal dipole, and you can, I know this is supposed to be a vertical video, but if if you can <laughs> do a horizontal a proper horizontal dipole, you'll you'll very much enjoy it. It is a good it is a good yeah. antenna to go. Soda <laughs> parks on the air, you may not have that luxury. That's why verticals exist, and I think. Uh, that the uh, the Wolf River is a good no, not affiliated. I'm not affiliated with these guys. I paid cash money for this one, and I really do like this antenna. I think it's a good balance between weight and, and capability. Yeah, I don't disagree with the with the soda approach on there. Um, I would try to use the dipole whenever possible, even if it wasn't at you know the ideal height. I think that they perform a little better. But I will say this: like as much as I've ragged on the chameleon. Uh, most of it, I'm, I'm just you know uh, giving them a hard time. Uh, but on 20, it's a it's a very passable backpack antenna, very very passable. I had very little complaints considering the size that it breaks down to and how easy it is to set up. The only issue is is like you know without having to run like a ground you know like a radio field on those things, you are compromising and you just have to deal with that. But when we got into 40 meter on those things, it was just game over, absolutely yep. game over on that thing. Sorry for the clicky keyboard. New keyboard. New keyboard. Who oh, does? hey. New keyboard day. Cool, man. Well, uh, yeah, good to talk to you. All right, uh, you heading over to, to the Discord? Hope to see everybody on the Discord after this. All right, buddy. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, hopefully, hopefully Bob uh, comes on in there. Hopefully he's not too not too afraid. No, Bob's, Bob's got to take I'm care of some stuff, afraid. I think. But we'll, we'll, he's never afraid. But we'll, maybe he'll catch up with us later. Okay, man. Sounds good. We'll see you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys on Discord here shortly. All right, guys. Uh, okay. One, one more Catch call. I'll let you guys go. And I, I got one more. I, I'm not sure who this is, so we're going in blind. Take it easy. Uh, K6 UDA and Whip Grease. Hey, Hello. new caller. What's going on? Hey, hi. This is another call from the UK. Very oh. Good. I'll take good morning. It's 20 minutes past four in the morning over here. Um, this is Ian G seven H F S. Loving the uh, video, the, the live chat. Never been on here before. Let me get that call again. N G seven H N G seven H D S. So I was speaking a bit too fast. No, it's G seven Golf seven Hotel Foxtrot Sierra G seven H F S uh, down in the southeast coast of the UK. Oh, wonderful. Okay, how are you doing? So yeah, I'm so. Uh, yeah, finally, so it's 20, 20 past four in the morning here. But I'm, I'm working, I'm doing a night shift, uh, just doing some security work at the moment. So mm -hmm. I'm sitting here bored, so I thought I'd have a look on YouTube and uh, just loving what, uh, what I'm seeing. Oh, thank um, you for watching. I do quite a bit of portable and mobile stuff myself, but I, I just tend to use a fishing pole and a, and a, a length of wire, just a, a random length of wire, and that, that works for me. But looking at, I, do, I use the ham sticks for mobile use as well. Do you, um, are you well. using like a Japanese but, uh, style uh, fishing rod type of thing, like this guy? Uh, no, I, I've got one from Sota. It's, 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 they call it a roach oh, pole. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A squid pole. Yeah. Is that uh, soda and, beans? Uh, just, soda just, beans, just beans right? A length of, yeah, I'll give it from there. It's just a little telescopic thing. Um, it, 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 and I just literally use about 20 meters of wire with a little um, MFJ Helmets tuner. That works on all the bands, and I've worked around the world on that. So. Oh, you use the, yeah, uh, QRP, um, the MFJ fun. QRP tuner? The manual one? Yeah, well, yeah, the little MFJ 16010, yeah. I think it's called. It's a little Helmets. And but yeah, it does, 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 does work, you know, works really well. So. But yeah, having what what, uh, what I'm seeing on there, and um, uh, I better let you go. I think you wanted to go, didn't you? But uh, just for a sec, come on, say hello. And I'm always watching your videos. But, oh, I appreciate uh, that. I do. Uh, what what was contact. the first name again? I didn't get the first name. 
sorry, it's Ian. Ian is what. Oh, name. got it. Okay. Ian. Is. Well, I and, appreciate uh, that. Yeah, great. Oh. And I'll tell you what, I'm really jealous of you drinking those beers. I really want one. I'll have to wait till I get home tonight. Oh yeah, you, you're, you're working the late shift at uh, at doing security. Yeah, right yeah, now. I'm so, yeah. another couple of hours to go. They, they frown I'm, on they I'm frown on drinking them. when you're doing security, right? They're, that's not okay, right? Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I'm here on my own anyway, but I'm, it's not good to drink no. while I'm on duty. But so, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going out with some pals tonight, so we'll, we'll have a couple of beers. But anyway, I want you to send me through. Great to. Uh, Great to make the contact with you on the phone. Thank you very much, Ian, for calling in. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you so much. Cheers, Charles. Cheers. 73. Bye. 73. Bye. All right. Well, fantastic, everybody. I'm super excited about where we're at right now. I, I love the workbench and what's going on. Um, we'll be back next week with another fun episode from the Ham Radio Crash Course. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I would love it if you join the Facebook group and join the Discord because it's uh, 24 hours. There's somebody out there if it's not me. In fact, what's great about the Discord and the Facebook is that there's plenty of other people that are smarter than me on lots of different areas, and they comment, and everybody's extremely positive and welcoming. And I think – I'm not saying that's what's lacking in ham radio, but we could definitely use more of it, definitely use some more inclusivity, which is what we're aiming for. So please – Join us out there if you can. Give me a thumbs up, and I'm heading to Discord. If you want to talk, I'll be there. All right, guys, take it e and gals, take it easy, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.